children look different from their parents and so do the young ones of other living organisms. What are the reasons for such variations? To find the answer to this question, Thomas Hunt Morgan and his colleagues tried to verify the chromosomal theory of inheritance through various experiments. Morgan chose the tiny fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, for his research. There were several reasons for this. First, these flies could be easily grown in a simple synthetic medium in a laboratory. Morgan also found that a single mating in these flies produced a large number of offspring. Moreover, the male and the female flies were easily distinguishable and had only four pairs of chromosomes, making their analysis easier. Another reason for Morgan selecting these flies was that they showed several heredity variations which could be easily seen through low-power microscopes. Finally, these flies had a life cycle of just two weeks, which would help study several generations within a short span of time. Morgan carried out several dihybrid cross experiments with Drosophila to study sex-linked genes. For example, he crossed yellow-bodied, white-eyed females with the genotype small y small w with brown-bodied, red-eyed males with the genotype small y plus and small w plus to produce the F1 generation. Here, the plus sign in the superscript represents the dominant wild type alleles. Morgan then intercrossed the F1 generation to obtain the F2 generation and observed that the genes did not separate independently, which was an exception to Mendel's law of independent assortment. Morgan and his colleagues knew that only the X chromosome bear genes. Furthermore, they noticed that during a dihybrid cross, if two genes lie on the same chromosome, then the proportion of parental gene combinations, that is, small y small w and small y plus small w plus in this case, was much higher than non-parental gene combinations or the recombinant types. That is, small y plus small w and small y small w plus. Morgan found that this was due to physical association or linkage, which describes the tendency of certain genes to be inherited together and their ability to retain their physical combination in progeny. Genes which are located on the same chromosome and that are inherited together are known as linked genes. For example, it is the linked genes that account for a phenomenon like red hair being strongly associated with light colored skin in human beings. If an individual inherits one of these traits, he or she is most likely to inherit the other trait too. This phenomenon of linkage can be better understood through a process known as crossing over, which occurs during meiosis. During the Pachetine stage of meiosis 1, sections of a chromosome usually intertwine and exchange genetic material between non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes. This process, where chromatids of a homologous pair exchange segments between them, is known as crossing over. Crossing over leads to recombination or the creation of different combinations of alleles that do not exist in either parents. And hence, it is one of the most important events that lead to variations in offspring. Another fact discovered by Morgan and his colleagues was that the likelihood of two genes separating during crossing over was proportional to the distance between them. 
In other words, the closer the genes, the more likely that they will stay together. And the further they are, the more likely that they will separate. Now, let's consider another experiment conducted by Morgan, where he crossed white-eyed miniature winged females with the genotype small w small m with red-eyed normal winged males with the genotype small w plus small m plus. From his experiments, Morgan noticed that tightly linked genes or genes nearer to each other showed very little recombination, while loosely linked genes or genes far from each other showed higher recombination. For example, the yellow and white genes showed a recombination of just 1.3% as these genes were tightly linked while the white and miniature genes showed a recombination of 37.2% as these genes were loosely linked. This linkage and the frequency of recombination of genes on the same chromosome were used by Morgan's student Alfred Sturtwent as a measure of the distance between genes to map their position on the chromosome. For instance, in the experiment we just saw, it is only through mapping that we learnt that genes small y and small w were located close to each other and genes small y and small m were farther apart. Today, genetic maps are being extensively used for linkage studies and analysis and are a key tool for genome sequencing or discovering the location and identity of genes. Thus. Morgan's experiments on linkage ruled out Mendel's law of independent assortment when linked genes are considered. People are usually eager to know the sex of their unborn child. Today, advancements in genetics have made it possible to determine the sex of an unborn child though the practice is illegal in many countries, including India. However, determining the sex of an unborn child wasn't easy in earlier times. And the mechanism of sex determination puzzled geneticists for a long time. Early research in the field of genetics was carried out using insects. In fact, the development of the chromosomal theory of sex determination took place through cytological studies carried out on insects. Today, sex determination in human beings and several other animals is done with the help of specific chromosomes. These sex determining chromosomes are called sex chromosomes while the rest of the chromosomes are called autosomes. For example, human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Of these, just one pair is the sex chromosome, while the remaining 22 pairs are autosomes. The very first indication that sex chromosomes were different from autosomes came from the experiments conducted by German biologist Hermann Henking in 1891. Henking noticed a specific nuclear structure in a few insects during spermatogenesis. However, he also noticed that only 50% of the sperms received this structure. Henking named this structure the X body. However, he couldn't explain the significance of this structure. Further research by several other scientists 
led to the conclusion that the structure was actually a chromosome and they named it the X chromosome. Let's now take a look at a few sex determination systems which are actually biological systems that help determine the development of sexual characteristics in an organism. In human beings and several other mammals and insects, the sex determination system is of the XXXY type. Human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Of these, the 22 autosomes are identical in both females and males, while the sex chromosomes are different. The sex chromosomes in females are a pair of X chromosomes, while those in males are an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. In other words, the ovum produced in females contains only X chromosome, while in males, two types of gametes, X and Y, are produced during the process of spermatogenesis. Of the total sperms produced during spermatogenesis, 50% carry X chromosomes, while the remaining 50% carry Y chromosomes and there is an equal probability of fertilization of an ovum with a sperm carrying either of the chromosomes. So, when an ovum carrying the X chromosome unites with a sperm carrying the X chromosome, the resultant XX zygote develops into a female offspring. On the other hand, when an ovum carrying the X chromosome unites with a sperm carrying the Y chromosome, the resultant XY zygote develops into a male offspring. Therefore, it is obvious that the sex of the offspring is determined by the genetic makeup of the sperm. Moreover, it is quite evident that the probability of a pregnant woman delivering either a male or a female offspring is always 50%. Another mechanism of sex determination is the XXXO type, which is applicable to several insects such as grasshoppers, cockroaches and bugs. In this type of sex determination, females have two identical homologous sex chromosomes designated as XX, while the males have just one sex chromosome designated as XO. Here, the O denotes the absence of a second sex chromosome. Now, when an ovum carrying the X chromosome unites with a sperm carrying the X chromosome, the resultant XX zygote develops into a female offspring. Conversely, when an ovum carrying the X chromosome unites with a sperm carrying no chromosome, the resultant XO zygote develops into a male offspring. Therefore, we have seen that in both the XXXY and the XXXO mechanism of sex determination, it is the genetic makeup of the sperm that determines the sex of the offspring. Such a system of sex determination is known as male heterogamity. However, there are also several organisms in which the mechanism of sex determination is female heterogamety. That is, two different types of gametes pertaining to the sex chromosome are produced by the female. An example of such a sex determination system 
is the ZWZZ type and it occurs in birds, reptiles, fish and some insects like butterflies and moths. In this type of sex determination, females have two different types of sex chromosomes designated as ZW apart from the autosomes. Males, on the other hand, have identical sex chromosomes designated as ZZ apart from the autosomes. Now, if an ovum carrying a Z chromosome unites with a sperm carrying the Z chromosome, then a ZZ zygote is formed and it develops into a male offspring. However, if an ovum carrying a W chromosome unites with a sperm carrying the Z chromosome, a ZW zygote is formed and it develops into a female offspring. Another example of female heterogamete is the ZOZZ type of sex determination seen in some butterflies and moths. In this type of sex determination, females have only one sex chromosome designated as ZO. Here, the O denotes the absence of a second sex chromosome. Males, on the other hand, have two identical sex chromosomes designated as ZZ. Therefore, if an ovum carrying the Z chromosome unites with a sperm carrying the Z chromosome, the resultant ZZ zygote develops into a male offspring. However, if an ovum containing no chromosome unites with a sperm carrying the Z chromosome, the resultant ZO zygote develops into a female offspring. Thus, as soon as the zygote is formed, the sex of an organism gets fixed and it can be determined by analyzing the composition of the zygote. These are a few images of people suffering from various hereditary disorders. A hereditary disorder is a condition that is genetically passed on to one's offspring. For a long time, human beings have been aware that certain disorders are passed on from one generation to another. Yet it was primarily after the rediscovery of Mendel's work that studies pertaining to the inheritance pattern of traits in human beings began. However, due to certain scientific and ethical reasons, it was not possible to carry out controlled crosses in human beings as in certain plants and animals. In such a situation, the only alternative was to study a family's history to understand the inheritance of a particular trait. Such a genetic analysis of a trait that is traced through several generations of a family is known as pedigree analysis. This analysis plays a very important role in tracing the inheritance of abnormal traits. A pedigree analysis involves using a pedigree chart with standard symbols to represent the inheritance of a particular trait. A few of these symbols are as shown. The standard symbol representing a male is a square and that for a female is a circle. A rhombus is used in case the sex is unspecified and a filled square, circle or rhombus is used to represent an affected individual. Mating is indicated by a single line and mating between relatives by a double line. Parents are placed above and children below as shown. However, a parent with a disease-affected male child is represented differently 
and five unaffected offspring are represented by a number within the rhombus. Identical twins and non-identical twins are represented as shown. Whereas a heterozygous male is represented by a half-filled square and a heterozygous female by a half-filled circle. A circle with a dot in the center represents a carrier and the death of a male or female is represented as shown. Pedigree analysis helps trace alterations in genes. Let us learn about these alterations and the reasons for the same. It is the genes in the DNA helix of a chromosome that contain information regarding inheritance or in other words information such as height, color and even diseases that an individual is prone to. This DNA helix is in a highly supercoiled form and runs continuously from one end of a chromatid to the other. Also, each DNA helix contains the genetic information required for the functioning and development of all living organisms and is thus passed from one generation to the next. However, on rare occasions, such as recombination and mutation, Changes or alterations do occur in the genetic material, which alter the chromosome. Mutation in genetic material leads to changes in the genotype and phenotype of an organism. Mutations in the genetic material can be of two types, gene mutation and chromosomal mutation. Further. Gene mutations can be of different types, such as substitution, deletion, and insertion. In substitution mutation, normal base pairs of DNA are substituted by other base pairs. A type of substitution mutation is point mutation, where a single base pair of DNA is substituted by another base pair. For example, in sickle cell anemia, point mutation occurs due to the substitution of a single base pair. Deletions, on the other hand, occur when a sequence in a gene is deleted. For example, deletion of a sequence of gene in the APC gene, which is a tumor suppressor gene, results in a non-functional protein which leads to cancer. Insertions occur when a sequence in a gene is added. For example, in Fragile X syndrome, additions of base pairs in the X chromosome make it fragile, leading to mental retardation. However, when deletions and insertions of several base pairs of DNA occur, it results in a frame shift mutation. For example, Tay-Sachs disease, which causes mental and physical disabilities, is due to frame shift mutation. Unlike gene mutation, chromosomal mutations occur when the number of chromosomes changes or when there is a change in the structure of a chromosome. Chromosomal mutations can occur during the formation of a zygote which can lead to an increase or a decrease in the chromosomal number or structure. Down's syndrome and Jacobson's syndrome are some disorders caused by chromosomal mutations. Down's syndrome is caused by an additional X chromosome in the 21st chromosome and Jacobson's syndrome due to deletion of a portion of the 11th chromosome. But why do genes and chromosomes undergo mutations? There are several physical and chemical factors that change the genetic structure or that induce mutations. These factors are known as mutagens, UV radiation, 
gamma rays, alpha particles, bromine and nitrous acid are some mutagens that cause changes in the genetic structure. Therefore, mutations in genes and chromosomes lead to several disorders and the inheritance pattern of these disorders can be studied through pedigree analysis. All of us are carriers of potentially hazardous genes. While some of these genes lie hidden in a recessive form all through our lives, there are others that show their influence later in our lives when triggered by environmental factors. There are also a few genes that show their presence immediately after birth or even before we are born in the form of genetic disorders. We can broadly classify genetic disorders into two types, Mendelian and chromosomal. Mendelian disorders include genetic disorders caused by alterations or mutations in a single gene, as in thalassemia and sickle cell anemia. While chromosomal disorders include genetic disorders caused by an excess, absence or abnormal arrangement of chromosomes as in Down's syndrome and Turner's syndrome. Let's now learn about Mendelian disorders in greater detail. The mutated genes that cause Mendelian disorders follow the laws of Mendelian inheritance. These disorders can be autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, X-linked dominant or X-linked recessive. Some Mendelian disorders are cystic fibrosis, hemophilia, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, and phenylketonuria. Let's study more about some of these Mendelian disorders. Hemophilia is a genetic disorder that impairs the body's ability to coagulate or clot blood when a blood vessel breaks. This disorder occurs when a single factor from the several factors involved in the process of coagulation is affected. It is a sex-linked recessive disorder inherited through the X chromosome and the possibility of a male offspring inheriting this disorder is greater than in females. A male offspring inherits this disorder from an unaffected carrier or a heterozygous female parent and these males are generally inviable or infertile in later stages of their lives. The possibility of a female offspring being hemophilic is very rare and occurs only if both the X chromosomes in the offspring are in recessive form. That is, the father must be a hemophilic carrying the recessive X chromosome and the mother must be a carrier or a hemophilic too. Did you know that haemophilia is also known as a royal disease as Queen Victoria of England was a carrier of this disease and had passed it to her descendants. Another widely studied Mendelian disorder is sickle cell anemia which affects red blood cells or RBCs. It is a lifelong disorder where the RBCs turn into a rigid sickle shape which reduces their flexibility, thereby leading to several health complications. This disorder also reduces the life expectancy of the affected individual. Sickle cell anemia 
is an autosome-linked recessive trait or a trait inherited through non-sex chromosomes and it is passed on to the progeny when both parents are carriers of the gene which means they are heterozygous for the trait. The disorder is controlled by the two alleles HBA and HBS. These alleles can form three genotypes namely HBA 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 HBS and HBS HBS. Of these, homozygous individuals with genotype HBA HBA are neither carriers nor sufferers. Heterozygous individuals, on the other hand, have the genotype HBA HBS and are unaffected by the disorder but are carriers and have a 50% probability of passing the disorder to the progeny. It is homozygous individuals with genotype HBS HBS that have a phenotype displaying the disease. Sickle cell anemia is caused when glutamic acid is substituted with valine at the sixth position of the beta globin chain of a hemoglobin molecule. The code for amino acid is present on the beta globin gene where GAG coding for glutamic acid in a normal gene is substituted with GUG coding for valine in a sickle cell gene. Now, under low oxygen tension, the mutant hemoglobin molecule undergoes polymerization which changes the shape of the RBC from a biconcave disc-shaped structure to an elongated sickle-shaped structure. Sickling of RBCs obstructs the blood vessels and reduces blood flow to different organs of the body leading to an anemic condition. Like sickle cell anemia, phenylketonuria is also an autosomal recessive trait. It is an inborn error of metabolism inherited during birth and is characterized by the deficiency of the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase, which is required to convert the amino acid phenylalanine into tyrosine. As a result, phenylalanine accumulates in the body and gets converted into phenylpyruvic acid and other derivatives. Phenylpyruvic acid is even detected in the urine as the kidneys fail to absorb it. If phenylpyruvic acid and its derivatives accumulate in the brain, it could lead to mental retardation. To avoid such a situation, a diet low in phenylalanine is usually recommended for patients suffering from phenylketonuria. Thus, Mendelian disorders occur due to a mutation in a single gene and a pedigree analysis helps determine the trait in question. Take a look at this family photo. Can you see that the color of the child's eyes is blue, just like her parents? Now, take a look at this picture. Here, the child has light brown hair, while that of his parents is black. What accounts for such similarities and differences? The answer to this and several related questions are dealt with in genetics, a branch of biology that studies inheritance and variations in characters among related organisms, largely in their evolutionary aspects.
Inheritance is the basis of heredity. It is the process of passing characters from parents to offspring. Variation, on the other hand, is the degree by which an offspring differs from its parents. Human beings have been using their knowledge of genetics since prehistoric times. Our ancestors knew that sexual reproduction was one of the causes of variation. Based on this principle, they practiced domestication and selective breeding of animals and plants. For example, the Sahiwal cow found in Punjab was obtained through artificial selection and the domestication of ancestral wild cows. However, our ancestors had very little knowledge about the scientific basis of genetics. It was only in the mid-19th century that advances were made in the field of genetics by Gregor Johann Mendel. Mendel was an Augustinian priest and scientist who gained fame posthumously for spearheading the science of genetics. He proposed several laws of inheritance by conducting extensive research and hybridization experiments on garden peas or by some sativum for about seven years. Hybridization is the process of crossing two individuals differing in at least one character resulting in a hybrid individual. The reason for Mendel choosing common pea plants for his research was that the plant had various contrasting characters such as length of the plant, color of the pod and shape of the seed that were visible to the naked eye. Moreover, self-pollination as well as cross-pollination was possible in these plants and crossing between these plants could be controlled. In addition, these plants grow quickly and produce a large number of offspring. Mendel for the first time had applied statistical analysis and mathematical logic to problems in biology. He chose 14 pairs of true breeding pea lines similar in all aspects except for one character to conduct cross-pollination or artificial pollination experiments. A true breeding line exhibits stable trait inheritance and expression for many generations due to continuous self-pollination. Round or wrinkled seeds, yellow or green seeds, green or yellow pods and tall or dwarf plants were some of the contrasting traits chosen by Mendel. The use of true breeding lines helped Mendel create a basic framework of rules relating to inheritance, which were later expanded as scientists discovered new information pertaining to genetics. Also, the data collected by Mendel was quite credible as he had used a large sampling size for his experiments. Moreover, as he conducted experiments on several generations of test plants, it helped him confirm his inferences and prove that his rules were not unconfirmed ideas, but general rules of inheritance in all living organisms. However, the world had to wait till the end of the 20th century to understand the significance of Mendel's discoveries. Due to his valuable research in the field of genetics, Mendel came to be known as the father of genetics. And the rediscovery of his laws laid the foundation for the modern science of genetics. Now, let's take a look at the different terms that we come across while studying genetics. A gene or a factor is the functional unit of heredity material, that is, DNA. In other words, it is a unit of DNA that is responsible for the appearance and inheritance of a character. The alternative form of a gene located at a specific position on a specific chromosome is known as the allele. 
it governs the trait of an individual and is generally represented by a letter. A trait can be defined as a distinct variant of an organism's phenotypic character, which may be inherited or environmentally determined. For example, the color of petals is a character or an attribute, while the colors pink, violet and white are traits. The genetic makeup of an organism is designated by the term genotype, while the appearance of the organism is designated by the term phenotype. Also, every organism possesses two alleles for each character. If these two alleles for a particular character are identical, the gene is said to be homozygous or pure and the individual is called a homozygote. On the other hand, if an organism possesses two contrasting or different alleles in a pair, the gene is called heterozygous and the individual is called a heterozygote. In a heterozygote, only one of the contrasting genes is able to express itself, while the other gene remains hidden. This gene, which expresses itself in the F1 hybrid, is called the dominant gene, while the gene that is unable to express itself is called the recessive gene. F1 hybrid or first filial generation is the first generation of plants or animals obtained from cross-mating distinctly different parent types. When two individuals of the first filial generation are self-fertilized, the resulting progeny is called the second filial generation or F2 hybrid. Self-fertilization is the term used when fertilization takes place between male and female gametes from the same individual. The study of inheritance of one pair of contrasting characters is known as a monohybrid cross. For example, the study of inheritance of tall and dwarf plants, while the study of inheritance of two pairs of contrasting characters is known as a dihybrid cross. For example, the study of inheritance of round and yellow seeds and wrinkled and green seeds. To determine if an individual is homozygous dominant, heterozygous or homozygous recessive, a back cross or a test cross is carried out. A back cross is a cross between the F1 generation progeny and any of its parents. While a test cross is a part of a back cross between F1 individuals with a homozygous recessive parent and it is performed to determine the unknown genotype. Thus, Genetics explains how traits are passed on from parents to their young ones and the principles governing genetics were discovered by Gregor Johann Mendel, the father of genetics.